good afternoon everybody uh, the topic given to me is very interesting it's uh, how does the world of in the world of dynamic macro advertising out of home fits in but let's first just define uh, what is dynamic macro advertising it basically combines uh, the broad reaching traditional advertising with real time data and customization just to put it in a very simple form delivering targeted and relevant messages to the audience not for an individual but basis based on cohorts and patterns it is about improving effectiveness of a campaign uh we heard a lot about efficiency and effectiveness but this is about effectiveness not really uh, completely about efficiency and we are all talking about big data but you have to understand one thing is that uh, if we use data for the sake of using data we are actually hijacking human creativity what matters is using the data with humility okay and understanding that combining it combining data with the human ability to respond and react is the best use of data only then you will see results being delivered and human beings are very complex in nature you cannot just go by data uh, to target them so the session is all about this and how does out of home fit in according to me out of home beautifully fits in but let's i think hear it from the esteemed panel that we have here uh, they are all from various categories so we are going to hear different perspectives from them and my first question i would like to ask uh, pradeep what are the key drivers behind marketing in this past one decade especially uh, where it is concerned targeting and data is concerned see uh, uh, thank you and hello everyone one of the biggest uh, driver for us at least and what we see it's happening is is the amount of personalization because it's a extremely cluttered environment and in this cluttered environment how do you differentiate and if you are able to differentiate effectively and of course efficiently as you're saying but of course i fully agree with the effectiveness part there if you are able to do it effectively i think nothing beats that and of course in this effort people's attention if you have to grab it has to be personalized correct so differentiation with personalization i think is one of the most critical thing here what do you you think about it saibal because yours is a completely different category yeah i think uh, a few things which we have been observing in the last one decade is uh, see we have got two abilities here from the input side it is the ability to track consumer behavior it is ability to track through data the patterns which emerges now what that helps us from the output side it helps us create micro cohorts uh, which uh, given the current understanding is like every brand needs to find out its smallest viable market so once you define those micro cohorts you are able to reach out to them most effectively and most efficiently so two things which are very important and which uh, a lot of progress has been made in last one decade because of a lot of data available is the ability to drive campaigns much more efficiently and effectively by identifying the micro cohort of consumers which you can then scale what about you ashish so uh, rachna i'll start from uh, saying that the industry that i come from which is healthcare delivery uh, over the years over the decades however we know it is has been the most personalized business to deliver mm -hmm. right but sadly how uh, the brands have built in the hospital industry has un were not built on creating and reaching out with this personalized information to the patient it was always once you come in then is your patient care is personalized okay right because you will have definitely between the two of us or whoever th the 500 of us here we all of us will have our personalized care it will not have any duplication with anyone absolutely right but suddenly from last i think from last 6 to 7 years not even a decade that personalization has started to come in in terms of telling you what are your environmental changes mm -hmm. what are your seasonal changes and basis that your entire journey is now starting from preventive till the surgery so i think that has been a, a massive change into the healthcare industry if i come from there and uh, it's it's amazing now that 
in three months from now, it's going to be a dengue season. This is how you should plan yourself way in advance. It has become for that level for us. Okay. Interesting. And uh, what, how does the BFSI look at it? So, uh, see, the BFSI space uh, looks at, uh, uh, in the symbol of fashion, of course, it's very cliched and we have been hearing for such a long time that data is the new oil, right? <laughs> And uh, I strongly believe that if you torture data too much, it will exactly say what it, you want it to say. Data is important, but uh, in our industry, what we have been seeing is uh, the boom of internet in two, from 2013 to 2016, the way we saw the rise of internet usage and uh, add to that, Geo came out and said free internet to everyone. Add to that again, a layer of COVID coming into the picture. So the usage of internet uh, reaching the last mile, tier 2, tier 3 cities, etc. Uh, in fact, we have seen that the consumption of video is very high in tier 3, tier 4 cities. So, uh, and uh, influencer marketing is something which is catching up. At, uh, I don't know for other industry, but for yes, for our industry, uh, it's catching up uh, hugely. In fact, uh, I was just reading some reports some days back which said that uh, in this financial itself, almost 17 to 18 percent marketers will be the first time users of uh, uh, video influencers. And since that, uh, everybody cannot afford this large influencers because of course they are expensive. 56 percent of the influencers used by the brands are micro influencers. And it is very well being consumed in the market. So in our industry, like if you must have heard of uh, Rashna Ranade, sorry, not Lokhande, but uh, Rashna Ranade, uh, Finance with Sharan. These guys are uh, very active on talking about entire spectrum, not only mutual fund or insurance. Aap unse kuch bhi bulwalo. Stocks, shares, insurance, banking tapes, fraud, they have a content ready for everything. And another thing is shorter video content, less than 60 seconds. Beyond 60 seconds, you have lost it. skip So yes, data is important. But in our industry, what we are seeing is more of uh, influencers, video marketers, and of course, with boom of internet reaching uh, every corner of the India, I think it uh, does work uh, in benefit of everyone. Very interesting that everybody has spoken about personalization, which, whereas uh, that is one thing that uh, the world is moving away from because of the concerns on privacy, correct? It's all about respecting privacy, humanity, that is the narrative that is going in the world. But uh, I don't see India moving in the same direction. Like some time back we heard that, you know, uh, TV is declining globally, print has declined globally, but both the mediums hold very strong in the Indian space. Whereas uh, where personalization is something everybody wants to move away from, uh, in India we are seeing that screens are also shared. Now, it's not about personal screen space. Tier 3 markets are behaving differently. And the adoption of social commerce and all is extremely high where India is concerned. So, how does this if issue of privacy really affect the Indian audience? How do you look at it? Because all of you said that personalization is very critical. Maybe at different stages. So, how do you take care of privacy as an aspect? You can start. Saibal. Yeah, I think uh, uh, first on a general level what I see is as long as the consumers get benefit uh, in terms of personalization, in terms of communications which they can add value to, Indian consumers are not generally overtly concerned. But uh, to sort of touch upon a bit with which Tachina said, uh, while consumers may not be overtly concerned uh, as brands uh, protecting consumer privacy, protecting consumer data, especially what we call as personal financial information or even personal medical information, I think is absolutely critical for the brand. And if brands do a good job, it's also a way for the brand to differentiate a consumer by assuring uh, that their data is protected by the brand. And actually there is no contradiction. Uh, today, it is possible for you to mine the data because all these data are double hashed you, you can identify the patterns from the data without really uh, sort of 
being or putting yourself at a risk where some of this data may get exposed if you put in the right security protocols in how which you access the data and how you store your data. Uh, I think that is something which uh, is not in contradiction. You can actually do a personalization of communication without a sort of uh, putting your consumers at risk of data leakage. Yeah, by using data clean rooms. Yeah. Interesting. What about you, Pradeep? Uh, the privacy, absolutely, there's no doubt. It has to be the most sacrosanct thing for consumers and I think that's something that nobody will even agree to actually compromise, right? And for us, uh, it's the most important thing, not just, I think, and we maintain the global standards here. But at the same time, as Saibal also said, there are aspects of personalization that can be bought in when you as a brand can do it and you as a brand can customize it, people like it also. You, if True. you are doing it not with a third party but with yourself doing it with a restricted manner and not giving out this information to somebody else for your personal gains, people won't mind it but at the same time it has to be looked at every angle and that customer's privacy is not compromised. That has to be a sacrosanct thing that's… and as of now, I think we right now follow the European GDPR, but uh, once the Indian data laws are also coming in more strictly with this aspects, I'm sure we're looking forward for that because that's something very critical as well. So, if in your case, in your category, it is all about personalization post acquiring a consumer. Yes. Right, and yes. therefore it is acceptable because he's assured that his privacy is also taken care of. But what happens in the banking sector where you are all about acquiring the customers? So, uh, see, uh, as far as our industry goes and uh, especially the industry what I uh, represent is mutual fund space, we deal with money and it's your investments, everybody's investment that we are dealing with. We are very heavily regulated, right? I don't know about uh, other industries, but uh, we are bound to uh, be audited every year by the regulator as to how that data protection is happening, how you are not exposing. So we have to follow norms. We have to run uh, testings of, uh, in our language, we uh, say it as VAPT testings, which is, is a third party agency who does the certification of our web pages, whether it can be hacked or not hacked. If they can be hacked, where are the loopholes? You have to plug that. So uh, we are heavily regulated and of course uh, data protection is a part of uh, our ethos also uh, and privacy. Uh, when it comes to personalization, yes, it's desired. But in context of uh, India, so you did mention that in the world it is different and in India it is different. I think in India, most of the people generally, it's more about convenience rather than their privacy. I mean like if I ask four or five of us or anybody sitting in the audience, don't we happily give our mobile numbers at Shopper Stop or uh, Decathlon, etc. Why would we do that? It's for our convenience. Next time kuch exchange karna hoga, mobile number dega, bill carry nahi karna padega. That's right. a convenience for us. So we are ready to sacrifice our privacy when it comes to our convenience. Indian laws are moving towards data privacy and protection. Uh, I think most of us know that uh, two, three years back, RBI put a blanket ban on Visa, MasterCard and American Express from acquiring new credit cards unless they move their servers from uh, US or abroad to India. Recent one, two days back, uh, we have got a mandate from uh, SEBI, like not we. So we use Bloomberg as our platform for trading, etc., and everything. Now either Bloomberg moves its servers to uh, India or we'll have to figure out a new way. Oh, so, very interesting. So data privacy, the government is moving towards this. I think uh, maybe this year or next year there will be a data privacy legislation which is going to pass. It's in the draft stage with the parliament. That's going to happen. But uh, yes, we have to protect, we are audited as an industry, so data privacy is something which is moving ahead. People will, I think, slowly, gradually move towards it. It's a simple case of, uh, if you want privacy, use an Apple phone, or an Android. We so, are 95% yeah. Android market. Yeah. So, the answer on, for privacy just on lies. On the lighter note, till the time social commerce is suggesting which uh, phone cover 
I should buy basis knowing my phone type. I am okay. After that, I'm sure all the brands are not okay with even letting it go anywhere. True. I think, uh, yes, I think it's all about uh, respecting privacy in various stages of the funnel that the brand is and the consumer is. But I think you're also right on one part that Indian consumer weighs convenience far more than anything else. And I know personally people who are okay to even share their location uh, because they want Google to tell them what time they should leave. Right? So that's good. Cool. Just, to, just to add to uh, this also, see the data privacy, if a consumer wants and as Ashish rightly pointed that jab tak wo knowledge education nahi aega, till the time the education is not there. In your phone, in your Facebook profiles, there are mechanisms by way you can switch off the locations, don't show you the ads, etc. Yeah. How many people know about is the question? The awareness levels and education awareness is awareness. So that's key. also another point. Now, uh, coming to the key piece for which we are in the conference, which is out of home. Okay. In this evolving landscape and while you are navigating all these dynamic macro trends, how do you see out of home, what is the role that you see out of home playing in the entire marketing mix and I know that all of you use out of home uh, in some stage or the other. So, I would like to understand from you, how do you see out of home? You can start Ashish. See, uh, uh, as a brand, uh, we are into like how we, when you deliver healthcare, it's location based right now. So a hospital becomes the key place where you get all the treatment done. And usually hospitals are the places which are getting patients from around 20 to 50 kilometers of that radius. So when you have a, a, a product that sells like this, hyperlocal becomes the key. And then your media mix has to be changed accordingly for you, then you might be, say for instance, in one location in one city, it might not make sense for you to do print advertising day in, day out. Okay. Uh, doing TV advertising day in, day out. So then your hyper-local strategies come into play in which out of home plays a very dominant play. And even then, if I have to jump in and talk a little more on this, um, we even see our uh, considerations going up, we even see our uh, top of line awareness also going up and we even see suddenly your OPDs from those PIN codes also starting going up. So th that means the channel not only is making sense from a understanding or channel mix point of view but it is also delivering it as well. Oh that's great. So it's a, it's a very localized play uh, of out of home where healthcare is concerned. Yes sir. I would, I would like to add to what Ashish said, uh, while I would put a twist to it. See, it's all about contextuality. So outdoor is a medium which if deployed in the right location, it, it helps contextually reinforce some of the messages. I will give you two examples. Uh, one is while, while we are a very digital platform, we have wallets in say top 800 Indian corporates who use Medibody wellness service. Now many of them are not even aware that it is available to them given by their corporates or by their insurance copay wallet and they can use the service for free. So for us to ensure that those employees are reminded to use their wallet for either medicine delivery or health check or doctor consultation putting outdoors in tech parks or near tech parks is an excellent way to remind them that this is a service which is available. The second part of it is what Ashish told. Healthcare is a highly need-based service. So you don't think of healthcare unless you are uh, not really requiring it. So outdoor is very effective if while going to hospitals or for that matter certain other locations, uh, if you can provide top of the mind awareness that some of the services today are also available online. Because the biggest job of any online healthcare platform is to move the existing demand from offline to online basis convenience as a parameter. So targeting them in the right context, I think outdoor is also a great medium. Great. Yes, sir. So in, in our perspective, outdoor is uh, firstly a pure branding mechanism. I, I'm sure there'll be very few brands who may look at it as a performance mechanism, but then 
you want to really use for positioning and branding, I think outdoor is a super, one of the best uh, uh, mechanisms out there. Though it, I'm, I'm not talking about the video part of it. Of course, there are the technology and video enabled uh, screens, but then, but then when you look at the media mix, as even uh, Ashish was saying, you, you look at it from a perspective that you have only a limited amount of X amount to be spent and then you want to be the most effective with that. And you want to be quick and fast also. Nothing beats outdoor. I think it's the most cluttered free environment. You, of course, you have to select the right outdoor. It's the most clutter free. Digital is the most cluttered at times. You see, you'll be loaded with ads everywhere. I like this. <laughs> So, Outdoor is clutter free. It's the first time I'm hearing this and I'm really loving it. Yeah, of course, you have to select the right, right, right outdoor uh, hoarding because for us, when we as a car brand do ads, we definitely will select uh, locations and places which are really clutter free and, and they definitely give a complete dwell time which is a very good, especially at airports, especially when you're at a traffic signals. I think it's a very good branding mechanism and, and there we see a very good uh, importance probably in the COVID, the importance of outdoor went down, but then that's something that's definitely Yeah, because come people back. were not moving out, but yeah. they're back. I don't think we ever had COVID right now if you move around in Bombay. <laughs> yeah, Jignesh. So, uh, I think uh, what I say right now is some of thing or some of you may have heard like a broken record of which I keep on harping upon. Uh, outdoor is yes, of course, the one of the oldest medium that I can recall even before a TV or a digital came into the play. And I think when we were discussing with Rachna, I did touch upon this point. It's from the Raja Maharaja's days, outdoor is there. You know, this is the announcement from the king. It's as old as a, a medium. Uh, for us, yes, uh, whenever we plan a, a campaign, uh, close to uh, the 25 to 30 percent of the spends are earmarked for uh, the outdoor spends. And as Pradeep and others rightly touched upon, uh, yes, digital is cluttered. Uh, TV, if you switch the channel during the IPL match to see something else, your ad is not seen. Digital may you can skip the ad on YouTube, the banner is rotating. With outdoor, you can't do that. If you say, I am on the road and I will not see that outdoor roading, I will close my eyes, probably you will find yourself at a hospital at maybe Narayana Health Me, because you will meet with an accident, but obvious. Right? You can't close your eyes uh, to the outdoor mechanism. Outdoor is another uh, mechanism, where, uh, advertising media, where you can do some sort of CSR. You know, your garden is sponsored, l &T circle, this kind of stuff can only is possible with outdoor. The biggest thing is, and I'll touch upon, uh, this is my uh, conversation with uh, my agency, Madison Jayesh, why we did a campaign for our brand got transitioned uh, in the uh, end of uh, second half of the March and uh, we wanted to take that this huge new outdoor space which is at the Bandra, which is by the Russian publicity. Yeah. It was booked for next six months. How cool is it? The outdoor site was booked for next six months. Today, on any of the other digital platform, I say right now that I have to add up at 6 o'clock, I will get some of the other imp high impact inventory will be available. Outdoor is not like you will not get it. So outdoor is a very powerful medium. And I think uh, as marketers, and since I like 4 plus 1, 5 of us are here to endorse, and all of you are for the outdoor conference, it's yes, we all believe outdoor is uh, a great mechanism and it does work for us. I really agree with him that good properties are very difficult to get. I remember whenever I ask an agency for some good properties, they say that's an annual deal, that's not available. <laughs> yes. May quickly just to add to all of this, the minute our campaigns used to go live and outdoor used to come up, then we used to start hearing, up the campaign, campaign So yes, of course, these things used to happen and they're still happening. Yes, so I understand that outdoor is playing a great role in all your uh, marketing mix. I am loving hearing that it's a great medium compared to TV, digital and print, which is very impressive to hear. Uh, very rarely uh, advertisers are so vocal about uh, bashing other medium and you're actually promoting out of home. So I think this is a great panel discussion just by that standard. But now you know that every medium is digitizing right, whether it is TV, whether it is print, every other medium and so is out of home. 
and with this digitization there are a lot of digital out of home assets that have come up in a lot of place based or ambient spaces like residential corporates airports already have uh, and more and more are being built plus there is data availability which is there uh, at various agency levels uh, uh, you know on mobile data a lot of data is being available can do you think uh, this can improve the effectiveness of out of home advertising and how can you leverage these advancements can like how good it is for uh, mercedes to use doh for us it's, data. it's using data is definitely needed in fact and it's not so difficult actually I, i'm i'm really glad that tata motors colleague showed so many advanced technologies that they use but then for us it's very simple so we know that the advantage we have as a brand is we get the customers address right so we know that x y z number of people stay in a society and there are enough technologies these days which give you society linked ads right so you only do an ad in one community and one society actually right so and for us to select outdoor mechanisms in those uh, societies areas is very easy because we know that we don't need to go really mass but that helps us in data to also see did for the sales come out of that or not so it's in a way measurable for us so that way it's effective but as i said you can't measure always outdoor because it's a branding mechanism when you really go for the real impact ones so so we have to we have to not go with only data on this aspect great what about you sir yeah i think the, i will touch on the other aspect also i think with digitization the ability to show different type of content in a much more creative way which is much more clutter breaking also is something which is happening uh, earlier there were only so many fixed representations which you can do on a fixed asset uh, with those assets becoming digitized your ability to uh, reinforce some of your brand messages in a more effective way is increasing obviously uh, you need to figure out as rachna said the right ambient places where a consumer would be receptive or has time to absorb that information i would also like to add to what pradeep said i think this integration where you can choose as well as change uh, both is possible depending on uh, is your micro cohort or the target audience uh, residing in those locations or have they already adapted some part of your services and what is that you want to sort of de- them to see next and then if you are able to run a campaign where outdoor is also a digitized outdoor is also a part of the other uh, digital as well as traditional channels which can reinforce each other i think then that equation becomes stronger uh, and i think digitization is definitely giving us some ability to do that targeting building cohorts as well as so this uh, con- consumers the right brand communication most effectively what do you think jignesh see uh, digitization of outdoor is something yes uh, it's a welcome move that's uh, been happening my precise uh, point will be where are you putting up those digitized screens airport fine malls yes community centers yes as a industry i think and this is my view and i strongly believe uh, and i've had n number of discussions uh, internally as well as at the agency putting this digitized screens on the highways on the roads i think morally it is wrong you are distracting the driver with your changing ads with your larger lights it's a big distraction see we can always debate and argue that foreign mein itna hai times square mein itna bada laga hai etc but in india is a different context yeah right india is a different market altogether like even mcdonalds was forced to adapt indian flavors like paneer burger etc and paneer wraps the problem is we get so much carried away till the time and everybody has a blind eye to it see for so many years we do everybody knew right and i think uh, pradeep did conquer that 
wearing a seat belt in the passenger seat is mandatory and there is a law around it but unfortunately it took mr mystery's death for everyone to awaken and start using a seat belt including myself it's only after that episode i have started wearing a seat belt in my car when i'm sitting in the passenger that's whether it's uber my own car or anywhere so in the indian context it will take sorry but one major accident on a western express highway and the screen will be blamed and the next you see is the janta people coming on the road breaking out those screens bmc pulling them down and investment wasted by the agency or the people who are owning those sites i think morally we should not exploit the media so much itna nahi ghisna chahiye ki hum koi ulta kaatne aaye chahe i think that is something on the digital side which i would want to say digital yes or uh, whatever planning we do on this our outdoor uh, 10 15 20% is put in the mall media airport media ambient space etc where it is not harmful sorry uh, maybe i'm little harsh but i think that's the fair reality is what i feel i think what you're trying to communicate is that uh, if we want to put up digital out of home even on roads we should adhere to some guidelines so that uh, the consumer who's traveling does not get adversely affected right whether it is an anamorphic display or whether there are large signs it should be clutter free it should be area where there is high up pedestrian traffic like a times square or a piccadilly circus and it should serve the purpose uh, it should add value to the consumer's life and not really uh, be adverse on them so we hear that and i'm sure the media owners sitting here are hearing that and would take your advice uh, seriously we are not feeling bad about it don't worry about that okay yeah ashish go ahead so moving from that i hope no message i think if i come back to this yes um, all the um, brand managers were evaluating media mix have a habit of evaluating certain parameters be it saying that uh, we started with tv okay i started with tv i started with digital i have a metric style to evaluate now if you are starting to get there we have to get there very fast we are already behind right suddenly it will start giving the media mix of uh, doh much more chance when it is compared against the minute you start doing that you have the chance of eating somebody's pie as well so one it is required that it is in the similar uh, currency that we are using it already okay say for instance gross impression is everything that we all understand cpms we all understand do we want to uh, fit it and compare it from a cpt point of view then it makes sense for you so it's important yes the change is there and i don't know how many years we've been talking about this the rnf should come the kind of population the kind of multiplications the kind of uh, things that we have done to put a sense to it uh, but it is required and it's going to be helpful only nothing else so while i hear that uh, digital out of home is great and uh, it's uh, it's definitely a flexible way to advertise and gives you more avenues and all uh, measuring it is very important and considering that the availability of data is there uh, what are your expectations uh, you know from that data what are your expectations uh, in this current marketing landscape that out of home should deliver apart from digitization and on the data side i think i, I would continue from what ashish said see end of the day a marketer has 100 rupees to spend and uh, these days that 100 rupees is getting squeezed downwards <laughs> so it's not <laughs> actually 100 and then there are multiple stakeholders who are looking at that number right from the cfo to the ceo to the board who is asking you that what's the effectivity of your spend and there is a huge pressure to show even short term and medium term results apart from the long term brand building now given that being the reality and there are competing media choices available uh, so as a marketer one needs to balance and the way a marketer balances is by looking at what is to the extent measurable and how efficiently and how efficiently and how he can reach deploy his money so that the output is maximized now the problem with outdoors and that's what ashish was saying i think my co panelist will also agree is 
the measurability is not very well defined uh, there. You have matrices which you can use for TV, you can use for digital and uh, some of these mediums also give very short term results uh, and results very fast. Not short term results, maybe results faster like digital and all and you can measure it right from impressions on the brand side to transactions and especially very important from a digital brand where you eventually are integrated and you have your checkout cart and you can measure how much revenue came in and you can do all these attributions. Now what is probably holding back OH is there is, it's very difficult to measure unless you do it in-house. Uh, I will give you an example where we did it uh, in-house by A-B testing. Like there were hoardings which we have put in outside certain corporates. We had the same or similar product and then in other locations because maybe we didn't even get those outdoors. <laughs> they were not available. Someone had taken in for annual contract. But it was a good way to A-B test. And you could see a lift. But, but unfortunately that is not very scalable. I saw a lift of 7 to 8 percent approximately. Uh, but then it is not scalable. It is the effort which a brand has to put. There is no central or industry accepted matrices which you get. Uh, and that is sort of hampering uh, a decision. You really have to be bold to say that I will take a bet where I will put in money on outdoors at the cost of not putting it on digital or in some other medium like TV also where you can get reach, you have measurability. So having talked about all these pros of outdoors, I think that's a challenge which we have been grappling with. There is no, every media agency who comes to us have their proprietary models which are not comparable. Uh, it's not, you, can, you cannot club them together and make a holistic decision where you can go and sort of, it, it end of the day becomes more of a gut feel or something which is over years of experiences where you take a bet on putting your money on certain outdoors. I think that's the challenge. Okay, I definitely hear that uh, as a challenge. What I understand is uh, you're looking for uh, a common currency which you're able to deploy along with other channels uh, and you're able to measure exactly the way you measure other channels, right? Uh, it's a very, very large subject. It's not uh, a simple subject and I think a panel discussion is not enough for that, okay? But uh, do, you do you have a similar experience, Jignesh, on when you measure campaigns because you actively do a lot of out of home, especially when you do the trans did the transition to Bandhan. See, uh, I'll conquer with what Sabal uh, said. It takes really a bold marketer to go and tell the management with thumping art, can I say outdoor karna hi hai. At times, for ease and convenience and to make our life easier also, we may have to choose other mediums where deliverables clearly dikhta hai, like a digital or a TV where it is measured, right? So I think Cyber extensively did speak about hey, after the campaign, where do I get the data, what happened, etc, etc. I think uh, two, one and a half, two years back, I was a part uh, a speaker at one of those outdoor conference and I think I saw some presentation which did say that Within six months, we will see the standardized data coming out. It's been one and a half years. Uh, sorry, but I have not seen anything yet. So the industry did promise and uh, nothing uh, came out. That's uh, one. So standardization of data is required. More than that, where is the data for us to evaluate and select outdoor also? This is the post. Where is the pre-data? Where is the categorization? This qualifies as a category A site. Like one agency comes and says, nahi nahi sir, that is not A site, that is a category A site. Other agency comes and says, nahi nahi, this is category A only. There is no standardization on which site is A, which is B, which is whatever impact, etc. Number two, if not area wise, at least there should be some standard card rate to buy the hoardings. It is a classic, we have uh, a classic case of jiski lati uska has. Jiske pas wo medium hai, who has the inventory and if you want it, if available, pay a premium, get it, otherwise it's uh, all uh, dependent on uh, how it is going. Just a chal raha hai, hum 
चला रहे हैं इंडस्ट्री चल रही है वी विल कीप ऑन वर्किंग ऑन इट सो प्री डेटा चाहिए पोस्ट भी चाहिए आई एम गारंटिंग यू इफ एज एन इंडस्ट्री यू पुट दीज थिंग्स राइट विच इज प्रिडोमिनेंटली एम सेइंग अबाउट पी पी डी ओ एच प्रोग्रामेटिक दिस इंडस्ट्री कैन गिव डिजिटल रन फॉर इट्स मनी इट कैन बी कंपेर्ड एट पार वॉट इज डिजिटल गिविंग यू दट यू गाइज आर नॉट गिविंग मी डिजिटल इज ओनली गिविंग एडिशनल डेटा ओनली ना That's the only thing it is additionally giving. I'm like, are we as the industry telling that you are not able to give better sites, better visibility? I'm like, Pradeep did say, na, it's a clutter free, unlike TV or this thing. So that is something which is of essentially it is needed as an industry. If we don't take it up, how will we? What what is the percentage? Four percent, right? We are at four percent outdoor. Okay, I so, hear that. So, uh, on the expectations from this industry, you know, while while uh, while Jignesh really said really strongly about digital and that how we should not have digital on the roads, one of the biggest advantage is that at airports we find it very easy to actually change the creatives. We are sure that. There's nothing wrong in the printing. We're sure of the colors we want. We're sure of everything. While well, that's the advantage also. But at the same time, one of the biggest expectations from this industry and what we really, really struggle with convincing people for this is what Sam Balsara said in the morning: is the legality of it. And I'm sure all of you here have have uh, probably one of the best things. And then that's the biggest advantage you have is the legality actually. And then when we tell our Dealers, we insist that the the place that they do an ad cannot be something controversial. It cannot be something that will be raising some issues about this. There will be a bit of risk that they take, but then the legality is something that we say it is sacrosanct, and you can't actually compromise on that. And that's one thing that I say is a big expectation from this industry, which is probably a regulation or something that is needed over here to. Bring in the legality aspect. To it. Yeah, I think the legality is a far larger issue, which is which is all about having a centralized policy, exactly. and we are really governed by states and municipalities. Yeah. Our out-of-home yeah. legislation is not a central one, and no me is here. If you want, we can have an offline discussion on that. <laughs> okay. So what I hear is that while I am going to leave legality a little aside, because it's a very different subject altogether, and the country operates uh, differently on this, uh, unlike other countries, but. i understand the concern of getting data before doing the campaign to be able to select the site and getting data post the campaign to understand the effectiveness uh, of the medium but i can tell you one thing that uh, it is a sellers market because uh, we have limited inventory we are not unlimited like digital and hence price is something you'll have to pay for the location that you require that i can tell you on behalf of the out of home industry it will even if we have rate cards even if we bring around all these um, standardization uh, the price for the location will be non negotiable let's not see price is not a problem because the first ipl the first 10 uh, rate per 10 second was 1 lakh rupees yeah now the same people same brands buying it for 18 to 24 correct so price is not the point here yeah. the point the rationalization, is the rationalization towards it i understand that also also there is no benchmarked quality like yeah. i don't know what is the actual sites like today we do it very it's not it's not at all scalable we send teams to recce the sites just to have our own satisfaction someone from the brand side will also go and recce those sites the good sites you have to buy, take if you have to take a annual deal so there is a huge investment going in one bulk you have to manually go and at times recce those sites uh, different uh, different uh, agencies will quote different prices there is no standardized pricing also available so it depends on how much you can haggle negotiate all those are things which takes a lot of energy and then it will come down to you if you want this site you have to take it on an annual sounds annual. very india 
<laughs> then you on negotiate. All aspects. So if you have scale that you have to invest in outdoors or you have been able to convince uh, not only yourself but also your stakeholders cool. <laughs> that this is an investment you need to do, then you also need to haggle a lot. I think these are things which no one enjoys doing and if there was a more standardized way. Today when we compared with digital, digital is very easy. I don't need anyone. I will sit on the Google or Facebook console and with a basic knowledge even I can book my inventory and I can do a self-serve and I am done. I don't need anyone. Yeah. I don't even need an agency. I don't even need a digital marketing manager. I can do it myself. But, but yes, in we cannot outdoors, identify I books. will have to send someone to Reiki the <laughs> site <laughs> and we have been doing this for a while now. So yeah. I think this is so, something which should change. See, I think uh, it's a very local medium. Okay, while it is impactful, it is nationally available and all, but it's a very localized medium and we will always have ground nuances uh, to out of home. We will always have all these aspects, they will continue. But I hear that there should be a central repository system where you are able to easily select, easily choose what you want and understand, uh, you know, uh, the legalities, understand the standard on which they are operating. I hear that. I think uh, our time is up. I'm going to just summarize it for you if you don't mind, uh, right? I think uh, what I hear is that out of home is a medium that sells the best. But I think perhaps we have failed to appeal to the broader audience on this aspect because uh, the fundamental requirements of hypergrowth remains uh, the same. The need for effectiveness, transparency and measurability. And we do have the data, all we need to come together is see that how this data can yield results. And out of home is undergoing a transformation. I would not say it needs a transformation. There have been, uh, there is work happening at various levels, just the integration is pending. Uh, while there is data that has been launched last year, it has not reached the advertiser, but it is walking. Okay, it is being adopted, the adoption is slow, exactly the way privacy concerns are an issue. Right? It is slow, but yes, uh, what I understand from the entire narrative is that uh, out of home does have a scope to be part of the mainstream, to be part of the omni-channel assets, okay, and uh, it not only helps brand building but can also be with the digital digitization of out of home, with more and more place-based media can also be part of performance marketing and all. But thank you panelists for a wonderful sessions and great point of views. I like the way all questions were answered very candidly, okay, and we do take your feedback on it.